Hello, everyone. You are here for All Bound Awesomeness, brought to you by Impressive Solutions. And today I am here with the brilliant Mark Schaefer. Hi, Mark. Hey, Julie. Thanks so much for having me in the early editions of your show. I am just thrilled to have you here. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, For those of you who don't know Mark, Mark Schaefer is an acclaimed marketing consultant, keynote speaker, podcaster, and university educator. He is the author of 10 books uh, that I am big fans of, uh, which include Known, Marketing Rebellion, and Cumulative Advantage. His books are used as text at more than 70 universities, can be found in more than 700 libraries, and have been translated into 15 languages. That's pretty impressive, Mark. You know, it, it is. I know. I mean, the thing that is impressive is that, like, I had no idea this would ever happen to me. <laughs> like, whenever you say, oh, it's being used at these universities, I'm thinking, that is just so cool. Because who would have ever thunk it? But it's worked out. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and so you have a new book out, uh, Belonging to the Brand. And it's a little bit different than the other books out there and really offers a fresh take on the concept of brand communities. So what makes this book so distinctive? Well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. And thank you for saying so many kind words about about my books. That that means a lot. Um, Well, community isn't a new idea, Um, but it's, it's been around forever, literally. But what's new about the perspective I have in my book is that most business communities fail because the companies say we want to sell stuff to people and people usually don't want to gather if uh, the company's just trying to make their quarterly sales numbers. 70% of the of the brand uh, communities that actually make it are devoted to customer self-service. You've got a tech problem, Go to our community and people will help you there, which is fine. That's useful. But I think the overwhelming opportunity here is that we're overlooking the brand marketing aspects of community. Brand marketing is about building this expectation, this emotion, uh, this meaning between what you do and your customers or your audience or hopefully even potential customers. And the emotion, the connection that happens in community is the ultimate. It's the ultimate goal in in marketing. And Julie, this is almost completely overlooked by business today. And it's an opportunity that's staring us right in the face. In, In the book, I talk about three mega trends that are coming together that I think well, I more than think. I know <laughs> that it, it points to community as a potential uh, marketing opportunity right now. I think the time is now to really v- revisit this as as an opportunity for brand marketing. You just touched on uh, quite a few things that I want to follow up on. Um, I think I'm going to take it back a little bit for those who are are, are newbies to some of this stuff. And there might be like, wait a minute, brand community. How would you define it? Okay, great. Great question. Because a lot of people do get confused in that area. Many people I talk, you know, they'll say, oh, well, we have this community, but it's really like a mailing list or a group of customers or an audience. So, you know, I've developed an audience over the years. I've, I've blogged since every week since 2009, I've had a podcast. We're now in our 11th season, never missed an episode. I have a, an amazing audience. And, but it's, it's one way. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's really almost a cult of personality. If I go away, the audience goes away if the content isn't there. And I don't really know these people. There's tens of thousands of people all over the world that consume my content. And they've been very kind to me. Sometimes they'll pop out of nowhere and say, I want to hire you for something. That's great. Now, what defines community? What makes it different? There are three aspects. Number one, that there's actual like communion, like people know each other. They become friends and they, and they, and they connect. So that's one thing to think about. If you 
say, well, I've got a, you know, I've got a community. And I was talking to a guy today, actually, and he was just like insisting. He kept saying, my community, my community. And it's really, he was talking about like the people that listen to his podcast. I said, but they don't know each other. They don't know each other. That's, it's, it's, it's like a neighborhood. People have to know each other. Number two, community comes together for a, a purpose that it's, it's an intersection between <clears throat> what drives a company and what drives their customers. So an example that I use that's, that's easy to understand because it's so famous is Patagonia. This is a brand that stands for uh, stewardship of our, of our earth, of nature, of responsible outdoor recreation. And it's just no question that's what they stand for. Well, there's a lot of other people that stand for that as well. And they can be a bigger company, a more impactful company by involving their customers in this purpose. I have a friend who told me I won't buy anything else other than Patagonia because I'm on their team. He belongs to that brand. The final thing is that a community is dynamic. It's not wedded to one idea or one mission statement. It evolves. And that's the beauty of it is that it, it, it changes and it, it takes you with them. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in my, I started my community and my community is on Discord. So first of all, I didn't want to be on Discord, but my community said, we want to be on Discord. So that was an example, right? They took me to a new place and it ended up being great. I figure, all right, we're on, we have this community to learn about the future of marketing. So they must be interested in what I'm interested in. So I started a chat room about personal branding because I wrote about personal branding and public speaking and how to write books. Julie, those are the emptiest rooms in the whole space because the community said, no, we want to learn about the metaverse and NFTs and Web3 and chat GPT and artificial intelligence and the future of social media. And it's been great. They've carried me along with them. I am more informed. I am more relevant. I am a better educator, a better writer, because the community from people from all over the world are taking me new, new directions. Now, let's scale that up. Think of how powerful that idea is for you know, a retailer trying to look at new trends or, or almost any company you can think of. If you've, if you've got your finger on the pulse of people who love you and support you, it can take your brand in, in amazing new ways. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. And it sounds like there are just, it, if you're looking at community-based marketing, there are just so many benefits. And it's not even marketing anymore. It really is having that honest community where you have that that like-minded um, cohort, essentially. Um, so one of the things, taking it back to what, what you said a couple of questions ago, those three <laughs> mega trends that point to community as the future of marketing. I don't want you to give too much away, but could you speak to a little bit about what these are and why they're so dang important? Mm. Well, the first one I, I sort of dissected in uh, a book I wrote a few years ago called Marketing Rebellion. So far, this is my most popular book. I hope my new book will beat it. But, you know, Marketing Rebellion was a great, very, very popular, beloved book. In that book, it was like a wake-up call to say, look, you know, as marketers, we tend to get in this trench <clears throat> And we do a little bit better on our Facebook ads and we do a little bit better on our content headlines and our SEO. But we it's time to look up and see what is really working in the world, what our customers really need. They now have the accumulated knowledge of the human race in the palm of their hand. They expect more from our marketing and our businesses. So this is a book about marketing just doesn't work like it used to. That's mega trend number one. And in that book, I had a chapter about belonging and community, predicting this was going to become part of the portfolio. One year after I wrote this book, boom, pandemic. 
And a lot of the things I predicted in that book became true. Second mega trend, which was certainly accelerated and amplified during the pandemic, was the chronic mental health issues in the world. Julie, you know, a few years ago, I saw this headline in the New York Times that said, the loneliest generation. That talks about how our children and our teenagers are suffering just record levels of isolation and depression and disconnection. And like there was this incredible number, like 40% of millennials say they have no friends, zero friends. Increasingly, and this again, the pandemic accelerated this, you know, we're, we're locked down and we're locked out of our normal activities and, you know, our, 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 the places we find for social validation, relationships and friendships. So it's in the news everywhere. I mean, it's just, I think this is one of the major mega trends of at least the next 10 years. It's going to have a huge impact on business and on just about every aspect of business we can think of. The third mega trend is um, the dramatic changes in technology. Uh, and, and so much money is being spent on things like the metaverse, Web3, NFTs, which might be unfamiliar to a lot of people. But when you get through all the hype and the jargon, it really gets down to these are new ways to help people belong, to build community in new and exciting ways. And it's happening. Young people are surging into these spaces. And that presents opportunities and also challenges for traditional marketing. So you put all these things together. We need to find new ways to go to market. Our customers are longing to be connected in some new way. They're, they're literally crying out for it. And then the world is giving us a lot of cool new opportunities to do that. I'm, you know, I'm convinced and it's it's already happening that the community is the next big thing in in marketing and i'll just maybe this is a maybe this is a bragging a little bit but the 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 day i wrote the last words of the book the manuscript was over was done mckinsey came out with a major research article that said community is the next big thing in marketing so boom little mic drop moment it's, I, I do believe that that that's where that's where the world is going right now. So, so this is absolutely fantastic. You've touched on so many things that are really important, and the kind of these major sea changes in how we engage with each other, not just as marketers, but also just as people. Um, so there's a gazillion other questions I have. Um, I think I'll, I'm going to go seize on the easy one um, or easiest one, easy-ish one. I should say. Oh, so, don't go easy on me. Come on. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll ramp up. So yeah. one of the things that, you know, you, you kind of touched on already when you were talking with someone and they were saying like, hey, no, I have a community, but they didn't actually have a community. They just had an audience they, they talked at. Uh, what else are brands, you know, really getting wrong when they're trying to build communities? Well, I did touch on the, the you know, I would say the number one problem is they're just looking at it as a way to to sell more stuff, to make their quarterly numbers. And this is really a function of culture. If, if the culture can't support the idea of community, and community is really different. It, it, it's a commitment. It re requires a new type of leadership mindset to be successful. You know, if the community, if, if the culture... Of, of the company can't support it, it's not going to work. Your company culture is your marketing. That's what shows up. If you're, if you're buttoned down and, you know, very legalistic and you got to go to the legal department for every question someone poses on Facebook, this is not going to work. Uh, you know, if you're, but if you're very customer centered and open to try new things, absolutely this could work. So that's, that's probably the, the the biggest issue I see. Those in the community world will say 
the biggest problem they face is it's 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 usually under resourced. That's one of the things I say in the book is that the, the you know I believe the community manager is probably the most important human asset in the marketing department because that becomes the face of the of the brand. That's the customer touch point. That's building the emotion. And so um, that you just you just can't skimp skimp when it comes to that role. I think that there's a big value in growing further human to human connections and starting, as you're saying, with that role, having the person who is going to be that standpoint to be that that first human to human connection for the brand is so vital. So we've kind of talked about if if let's say for any organization who's starting to move towards a community, it sounds like one, they need to adjust their culture to make sure that they're being open and receptive and they're able to be properly positioned. And then two, to make sure they have the right individual to manage these communities. Is there anything else that you think needs to be lined up for now, the, that to be the successful? The other thing, Julie, that I spent a lot of time on the book, is, it's something I, I touched on earlier, is this idea of purpose. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect because the purpose can, uh, you know, can grow and change over time. But um, you need to spend some time thinking about what do we want to accomplish in the world? What's the impact we're going to make in the world? And how can we do it better? How can we have a bigger impact if we have a community behind us and we do it together? And, and there's, I have uh, a chapter in the book and there's lots of prompts and ideas to help, you know, when I say companies, it really can be a nonprofit. It can be a university. It could be any kind of organization. Uh, this fits. Um, so there's, there's lots of ideas in the book to, to kind of dissect and explore these possibilities about, and this is, see, this is another way it's so different from traditional marketing. Traditional marketing, we think about what's our value proposition. Our value proposition might be we have the biggest selection of, you know, uh, you know tractors, or we have the best service, or we have the greatest selection of deli meats, or we have the best location. That's great. We need to know those things, but that's not a reason to gather. So the mission statement, the value proposition is different from this, this purpose that's going to become central to your community. That's absolutely fantastic. Did you know that I'm an author? That's right. I have a new book out, The Inbound Marketing Machine. Unlock the secrets to B2B marketing strategies that convert. While marketing teams struggle to agree on what strategy actually looks like, this book gives you a holistic framework for content creation and distribution that converts more contacts, nurtures more leads, and benefits the bottom line. Get your copy exclusively on Amazon. And if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free today. So as we're building a community, what are some challenges that you know, should be anticipated? Well, resources, um, you know, to me, just speaking for my experience, uh, it's just, <laughs> well, let's put it this way. There's a quote in the book that I think is very powerful. Um, there's a fella in, in England that does something very similar to me. I mean, he had a mark, a traditional B2B marketing agency. And it just wasn't going anywhere. I mean, just, you know, a lot of the traditional marketing just wasn't helping him. Like it wasn't helping his customers. He he was feeling a little lost. So he started this community and it started like many communities with five or six people. They were meeting for lunch every month and they started saying, I've got a friend I'd like to bring. Soon they were taking up a whole table. Then they were taking up a whole room. And he said, let's, like formalize this and see where it where it goes. Well, now the, his community is bigger than his business. His community is his business. And he said, Mark, this is so disorienting because the leadership in a community is different than they teach you at the university. It's like you have to elevate others. You have to give up power. You have to you know, your biggest goal is to create a safe culture and to dispense uh, 
uh, you know, a reward system to, the, to this dispense uh, status in the community to create content that's not really about selling the attributes of your products, but things that will get people interested in, in your products and services or just ideas that are going to take everybody forward. Um, engagement is probably the most valuable measure. I mean, I've been a huge critic of engagement as a, as a metric. I, you know, I think it's one of the poorest metrics whenever you look at social media or content marketing. But I'm absolutely 100% in the camp of saying engagement is a sign of the vitality of the community. And that's going to lead to bigger things. Uh, one of the case studies in the book is um, Sephora. Sephora, brick and mortar business, cosmetics, skincare products. However, 80% of their revenue comes from their online community. And their number one metric is engagement because engagement shows they're moving in the right direction. So uh, I, I think that the leadership in the context of of community can be very disorienting. And it, it takes time and patience to get in the groove of what this really means. It's been disorienting for me, but it's also been, you know, one of the greatest educations of my life. <laughs> oh, so it sounds like if you if you're working in an organization, you convince if you convince the boss to start a community Engagement is one way that you know you're doing it right. What are some of the other uh, indicators that you're nailing it? Well, obviously, hopefully, at some point, you're going to be able to attribute some kind of revenue to the community. Um, you know, that's 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 you know that that can't be the central purpose, but that's you know what a business needs to do eventually. I think the most interesting metric is customer advocacy. And, and it, I think it's very interesting and very important in many ways because we're living in a world now, we're living in this streaming media economy where we don't see ads. I mean, I watch more TV than I've ever watched in my life, but it's on, you know, Amazon Prime, it's on Netflix, it's on, you know, Disney Plus, and you know, I'm watching The Mandalorian or Maybe I'm streaming Spotify. I'm listening to music or I'm listening to audiobooks. And, and so we just have, you know, our, the attention we're, uh, we're uh, paying to ads, it's down like 95% in the last five years. They're, they're almost invisible. So we've got to find this new way to connect. Even if people see the ads, they're not going to believe it. Trust in businesses, brand, brands, and advertising has declined 15 years in a row, but people trust each other. They trust what other people are saying. Now, if you can get to a point where people are so interested and so connected to a community that the excitement is being shared outside the community, wow, I mean, that is really an interesting idea. Here's an example of how this is working for me. One of the things we do in our community is we do experiments in the metaverse. And I actually have a metaverse penthouse. It's fake. It's two stories. It's got a hot tub. It's got a dance floor. It's got a meeting room. You know, it's got a kitchen and all this stuff. Haven't been able to really explain this to my wife yet, why this is on my credit card. But, uh, you know, so... We do these things in the metaverse where people in my community learn to give presentations in the metaverse. We've had like AI art shows in the metaverse and we're learning all these things. Well, after our last one, we jumped into another metaverse penthouse that was on a ski slope. And we learned how to jump in a fake hot tub in our clothes. We're up to, you know, our necks in digital water. <laughs> kind of weird. But we're seeing the sunset over these beautiful snowy mountains. It's beautiful. I'm sitting in a hot tub with people from all over the world and people are taking screenshots of this because it's extraordinary and it's fun and it's a memory we'll never forget. 
And they're taking those screenshots and they're putting them all over the internet. And here's what happened. People said, this is amazing. How do I join? This is, how do I get involved? I think I'm really missing out on something. So this idea of brand advocacy, it, you know, it's, you know, you, you know, you, you live in this world of UGC, user generated content. That's, I mean, that is the holy grail of social media or content marketing today or influence marketing today. When you get people independently advocating for what you're doing by sharing your ideas and your, and your content, even a screenshot of a fake hot tub. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the best. It's the ultimate marketing. It's, it's better than any ad you would ever buy. That's an absolutely fabulous story. And it makes me feel that, you know, there's a little bit of FOMO right now. Uh, Come on and to, join. It's free <laughs> to get in there. It's free. It's open. Come on in. The water's fine. The water's <laughs> fake, actually. It's so, fake. But it's fine. But, but fake it's and fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's the right oh. temperature always. Oh, that's, that's great. So one of the things that we've talked about here, and then just as a focus in your book, uh, is the idea around mental health and the healing psychology of community. One of the things that keeps coming up in conversations I'm having with all sorts of folks um, is around mental health and marketing. They keep ending up in the same sentence. Yes. So for some folks who don't trust marketers, which, as we know, is a, a decent Almost percentage everyone. of the population, yeah, mm -hmm. um, they might argue that this is just you know a new evolution in targeting and personalization. Um, however, others would argue that this is indeed genuine empathy. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what your take on this is, and why do you think this is such a big trend? All right, so let me let me answer it two ways. So. We, we are starting to see this creep into marketing culture. I think I, I really saw it for the first time about a year ago. I was watching um, the you know March Madness basketball tournament in America, and one of the sponsors was Powerade. They created a whole advertising campaign called Pause. The spokesperson was Simone Biles who like stepped out of the biggest moment in her career because mentally she wasn't ready in the Olympics. And I just thought this was extraordinary. A sports drink who's about, you know, action and achievement and, you know, doing your best work or, you know, running your best race is saying pause. And to me, that was really uh, a, a sign that it's that, that it's taking hold. The brands are starting to recognize. Now, you bring up a really interesting point. You know, do do we get to a point where this could seem insincere and manufactured? Here's the view I would take about community. This book, belonging to the brand, is a business book. It's a business book that lays out a really unassailable argument why there are amazing benefits to a brand community that are completely overlooked by almost every business in the world. So it's it has to be something that we consider for you know all the benefits you know I have a whole chapter just on benefits. And you know you, you just you owe it to yourself and your and your and your business and your boss to at least consider it. Now, this is not a book that's Pollyannish saying, hey, start a community and save the world. What I'm saying is, when you create a community, there are these secondary benefits. We need community, not want it. We need it for our psychological health, our mental health, even our physical health which is an extraordinary little fact I point out in the book. And by the way, you know, the, the things that I propose in my book and all these benefits, it's not like just my idea. This is all based on, you know, days and weeks and months of research that I did. It's all backed up by research and, and statistics. So the idea is this is marketing that works, but it's also marketing that heals. And that's kind of extraordinary to think about 
This is the only kind of marketing I know of that people will actually embrace. You know, they're not going to block it. They're not going to walk out of the room when your ad comes on TV. Uh, you know, I've got people in my community that are, they're almost like addicted to it. They're there, you know, every day and they're just starting all these. And, and I'm in a lot of other communities that are like that too. There's just incredible engagement and support and validation going on. Yes, that helps you as a company, but it's also helping people in the community, you know, feel esteemed, feel rewarded, feel heard, feel acknowledged. And, and, and especially, it's especially important for young people and teens today. That is a really, that, sorry, this is like the best way to go out to wrap up this podcast. That was a brilliant answer. Are we over already? We're, all, oh. we're over. I have one more question, okay. maybe two. So again, just wanted to circle back to, you know, belonging to the brand, not your first book. Um, I've been talking with a lot of other folks in the marketing world who are either publishing or getting into publishing. If we can go in the time machine, what was your impetus for putting together your first book and getting it out there? Um, I, I, I interviewed, um, I got to interview Tom Peters a couple weeks ago and I talked to him two years ago. Tom Peters is the author of In Search of Excellence, the best-selling business book in history. He's always recognized as one of the top business thought leaders of the century. So two years ago when I talked to him, he told me he was retiring. And now I, here I am talking to him two years later, and he has a new book out. And I said, what's the deal, dude? You told me you're retiring. He said, I'm desperate to get my ideas out. And I think that's what drives any successful writer or speaker. You know, if you're not desperate to get your ideas out, I, I think it's your book is going to be lacking a certain passion and urgency and, 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 and really authenticity. And I think that'll fall flat with, with the reader or someone listening to you to you speak. And, you know, I don't have a plan to write books. There's just like, I, I get obsessed with an idea, obsessed with a problem. And, um, you know, once I figure it out, it's like, this is big. This really is big. And, you know, I, I got to get it out. And, and so that's really what drove me from the beginning and it drives every single book. Um, a book, writing a book for me is an, just an exhausting process. Maybe it won't be in the future with ChatGPT. That remains to be seen. But, I mean, I, I put everything into this book. It's such a sacrifice, such a personal risk to write a book. Um, and, you know, the only thing that goes through my mind when I write a book is I will, I will never let you down because I know. There's many, many people out there who buy my book just because I wrote it, because they believe in what I'm doing. They know I'm not going to let them down. So to me, it's a big risk. And it's just, I, I got it. I got to get it out. You know, it's just like, I know this is going to help people. I just can't wait for them to see it because this is going to be an, a new big idea I'm putting out into the world. And you've put out quite a few big ideas. You know, you have quite a few titles out there. Um, if so, I am in full disclosure. I've bought quite a few of them. I'm also a book giver. I am the I am the person who goes and finds an idea that I latch onto and start handing them out like candy. Oh, so if if you had to pick one of your titles as the must read for every marketer, which one is it? Well, this this might surprise you. But absolutely, number one, the first book they need to read is Known. Known is about personal branding. And Julie, we're living in a world where artificial intelligence is nipping at our heels. It's, it's threatening our, to overtake our skills, our experiences, in some cases, our careers. And I'm convinced the only thing that can save us 
is the connect, the connection and the emotion that people have to you as a personal brand. If you're unknown, just putting information into the world, you know, you're, you could be vulnerable with what's going to happen. You know, we, 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 you know, I, when, when chat GPT came out, I wrote a blog post and I wrote words I've never written or said before in my life. And the words were, marketing has been changed forever today, starting now. I wouldn't have even said that at the beginning of the internet because we didn't know. Years to figure it out, right? But now artificial intelligence has been unleashed in, on, on the wor- in the world in an easy-to-use form. And the only thing that will save us is if you're known. I mean, when I write a book, People are going to buy the book. Artificial intelligence is, isn't going to take away my audience because they know me, they trust me, they believe in me, maybe they even love me. And that emotional connection, which comes from the hard work of creating a personal brand, is the only thing that will save us. And every college class I lecture to, every teenager or college student, I beg them to be working on this now. And, you know, and every professional. So I think I know which uh, book I'll be stocking up on. Uh, So (laughs) Team Impressa, you know what's going to be part of your Christmas package uh, (laughs) next year. Everyone gets one. So, Mark, this has been absolutely fantastic. You've shared some really great insights. Um, You've given us um, a lot of good stuff, uh, particularly around uh, belonging to the brand. Uh, I'm pretty excited to dig into that book and I'm hopefully the audiences as well. I think that the idea of these brand communities and building that genuine community, especially as we're talking about things like chat, chat GPT and artificial intelligence and all this kind of stuff, who building that genuine community with those real human connections is going to be more valuable than ever. So Mark, Absolutely. thank you. Yeah whether it's for the community or you as a, as a personal brand, you're, you're right on target. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tr- trusting me to come on your show in the early days and uh, best, best wishes. And you're, you're going to be great because I, I loved how well prepared you were for the interview. So congratulations, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for, uh, for putting up with me as I'm trying to uh, get some more polish on this, you know, we'll, 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 maybe we'll have you back when I get the, get the hang of it in a few uh few months or years. We'll see how long it takes. Hope you do. Hope you do. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Mark.